Hey guys, so recently I got the Radeon RX 570 because there are some really good deals going on here in Australia. The card is working great for me. We've been using it with a range of older platforms like Socket 775 and Sandy Bridge and most recently also with the Socket AM3. Now I got a few comments mentioning CPU or driver overhead and that this could be an issue with older computers that have a weaker processor. I've been told that Radeon cards might have a higher driver overhead and I find this topic really interesting. So in this video we will try to find out what's going on. Now approaching such a topic it's always tricky. There are a ton of variables and it doesn't really matter how you set up such a comparison. It will likely never be really fair. Also I don't have unlimited resources so we have to work with what we have. So we will definitely be using the Radeon RX 570. It has 4 gigabytes of video memory, which is perfectly fine for the games we're using today. Now from Nvidia, I believe a 1063 gigabyte would be a good opponent, but unfortunately I do not have such a card. Also the smaller amount of VRAM might affect the results. What I do have is a 1050 Ti, which also has 4 gigabytes of video memory. If you read and watch reviews, the RX 570 is clearly the faster card. But these comparisons are usually done on a very fast processor, usually overclocked and using the latest Intel generation with high IPC. If Radeon cards really do have a higher driver or CPU overhead on slower processors, we should at least see some sort of evidence in today's benchmarks. This GDX 1050 Ti was provided to our channel by GearBest. They sent us the Colorful iGame 1050 Ti. Now Colorful is huge in China, just not that well known here in Australia. So this is a proper GDX 1050 Ti with reference specifications. And the main highlights are for example the overclock button here at the rear of the card. We also have a very nice backplate. And very nice cooling with two fans. We've got heat pipes and the cooling solution is very quiet as well. There are links down below in the video description. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the test system. We're using a Socket 775 motherboard from Gigabyte. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR memory with 99924 timings. And a Xeon processor, it is the X5470, which is basically a Core 2 quad but with a stock clock speed of 3.33 GHz, which makes this a high-end processor for Socket 775, but of course is quite a lot slower compared to the latest generation Core i3 or Ryzen 3 processors. So let's have a look at some benchmarks. We're going to start with some modern games and then we're going to work backwards to older titles. Here we have Strange Brigade came out this year. We are testing both APIs in DirectX 12. We can see exactly what we expected. The RX 570 is ahead. Moving on to the Vulkan API, the Radeon gained a little bit of speed. The GeForce clocked in with the exact same benchmark results. The next game, a slightly older title for Honor. And once again, we can see the RX 570 in front but not by as much anymore. And we can kind of also see that at the low details there's a difference of 10 FPS, which widens a little bit as we crank up the details. The next game is Tomb Raider. Now this is not uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's the uh, previous one. And here things start to become interesting. If we look at the low details, the GeForce is in front. So the 1050, a much slower card, is now able to outperform the RX 570. But as soon as we crank up the details, the RX 570 pulls ahead. And with each more demanding detail setting, the gap widens. So the next game is Bioshock Infinite, an even older title. And here we can now see that the GeForce is faster at the very low and low details. But once we hit medium, uh, the tables turn and the Radeon is once again in front. And we can see a similar trend. The more uh, graphical settings you enable, the faster the Radeon. Moving on to the next game, which is Dirt 3. We can see exactly the same thing with ultra low and low details. The GeForce is ahead 
And then as we crank up the details, the Radeon RX 570 starts to become the faster video card. And we have one more game. Does it run Crisis in DirectX 10 64-bit version? And here the GeForce is faster across the board. Now, Crisis is a game we've been benchmarking it on various machines and it is extremely bound by the processor. So usually the video card is doing just fine, but you need a very fast processor. It also doesn't take advantage of multiple cores very well. It needs uh, one really fast single core with high IPC. So let's have a chat about what we are seeing here. At first I was a bit worried that we might not see anything interesting to talk about or that the choice of cards wasn't good. But although we didn't test on different systems and we just had a handful of games, I believe we can definitely draw some conclusions and make a few recommendations. What I'm seeing here depends on if we are CPU bound or GPU bound. For example, running an old game or reducing resolutions or details will give you a CPU bound situation with the video card being underutilized and waiting for the processor to feed it more work. In such situations, we could clearly see that the NVIDIA has a lower driver overhead, enough for the 1050 Ti to outperform the RX 570. Now the idea isn't to build a retro PC to play games at low resolutions and low settings. This is just something I did to put more strain on the CPU and to better flesh out the difference. The situation changes when we are GPU bound. This usually happens with newer games or by increasing the resolutions and higher detail settings, which is exactly what we are doing in these tests. As the workload for the video card increases, the RX 570 pulls ahead of the 1050 Ti, and we can see this pretty much in every game. Crisis is the exception. This game is extremely limited body CPU, so here, even with the highest detail settings, the 1050 Ti performs better. So some of the things to take away from this video is we can definitely see that Nvidia indeed has a lower CPU or driver overhead. And in CPU bound situations, this can result in the 1050 Ti outperforming the RX 570. Now this higher driver overhead on the Radeon, it will always be there, but the RX 570 is clearly the stronger card. So when you run newer games with high detail settings, it will come out on top against the 1050 Ti, despite the overhead. But the 1050 Ti is of course the much weaker card, so that was kinda expected. Now if I had a 1060, which is a much better match for the RX 570, with such a card we would likely see higher FPS across the board. But then you also gotta consider current prices and value. I can only speak for Australia, but here the RX 570 is the much better buy. The 1050 Ti is quite poor value. In fact, I got my RX 570, which was on special, for less than the cheapest 1050 Ti listed at the time of making this video. But let's say prices are more even, or you're happy to spend more to get the most performance out of your budget or retro PC, then I think the Nvidia card will give you better performance on something like a Socket 775 machine as we used in this video. So I'm eager to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. What is your opinion about CPU or driver overhead comparing GeForce with Radeon cards? I definitely want to revisit the topic. If I can get my hands on a 1060, then we could get an even better picture of what's going on. But I believe we saw enough in this video that uh, should be a good start and hopefully it answered some questions and helps you out when picking a video card for your retro or not so retro gaming PC. And guys, there you have it. That was a look into CPU and driver overhead comparing GeForce with Radeon cards on an older Socket 775 machine. So if you took video cards that are quite even in terms of performance, the GeForce card should get a little bit of a boost if you're using it in a uh, retro or budget gaming PC. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. 
do leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Very interested uh, about this topic. And if we have to do another video using some other cards or some other systems, that's not an issue at all. Just let me know what you think. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you found the topic interesting and you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.